Hi, Stephen Caleb with Brownells here, bringing you another episode of Smithbusters. And today, Caleb, you got the old AR cutaway out. What I, do you got going? I do. Uh, this is uh, another hot debate, hot topic, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the kids are saying nowadays, but <laughs> the kids piston ARs are better than direct impingement ARs. Oh. Well, there have been a lot of incarnations of piston-driven ARs that have been less than... They've been gross. Okay. They, they were I didn't terrible. Want to say it. They were terrible, Steve. I'm not going to name any specific brands, but they're not good. Um, but let me just get this out the way real quick here. When I say direct impingement AR, it's not a true direct impingement system. Look at our previous Smith Buster we did on that, and that'll explain all that, so I don't have to do that again. Um, but I'm gonna be referring to direct impingement in this video, but just know it's not a true direct impingement system. He's talking about one with a gas tube on it rather than a piston above the barrel. Right, that's what I'm talking about here. Uh, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about your traditional direct impingement versus your and when I say piston, I want to talk about, I'm going to be referencing the piston system that, that, that actually works good. Okay. That was designed as a piston system. Okay. And that's going to be the uh, HK416 compatible upper receiver. I got to admit, that one works. This one, this one works when all the others don't. That's, that's for sure. And it is a lot more expensive. Yes. Which brings me to yes. our first point. A piston, a good piston AR-15 uh, style, I'll say that, style, is going to be more expensive to manufacture than a direct impingement system. And that's simply because there's a little bit more involved in that. Right. Um, these, like I said before, these are, these are easier, cheaper to manufacture. Yep. And that is one of the big benefits of them. Now, that's not to say this is a bad system or inferior system. It all depends on what you're using it for. Let's take a look at you know, some of the the real big things here well, that's going to... Why did they want a 416 to be piston driven? You know, what's the big deal? So, like I said before, these are more expensive to manufacture. Right. So that they had to have a reason to want to wanna ditch exactly. this. These run cleaner and they run cooler. So if you're doing a lot of rapid fire succession type stuff and you want it to last as long as it possibly can... So you're talking... Like from here to here, it's cleaner and cooler. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and the actual part that matters, where all your, your right. moving receiver parts are, like your bolt carrier group. Uh, not to say that the piston doesn't move, it obviously moves. And yes, you still have to clean the piston, uh, but it does run cleaner and cooler in the, the actual The cooler parts. especially, I can believe. You're not piping hot gas. Yeah, all your, your hot bolt. gas, all your hot gas is staying up here for the most part. Right. So your bolt carrier group is running a lot cooler and it's running a lot cleaner. So I imagine for full auto fire, that's extremely advantageous. Yep, it's uh, for full auto fire, especially uh, in environments where you can't necessarily, you know, stop and clean. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely the way to go. So if you were in Ukraine right now, you'd probably want that system. I would, yeah, I would pick this system. Now, I will say this, it is heavier. Yeah. So it's more expensive to manufacture, it's heavier, those are the cons of your, your piston system, but it runs cleaner and cooler. Those are your pros. Yeah. So on the flip side of that, you know, you have your direct impingement. It runs hotter, it runs dirtier, uh, but it is cheaper to manufacture and it is lighter. Right. And it's, it's only fair to say that both systems were developed by large organizations who were used to working with the military to meet a specific goal. Right. So this was not some independent startup from 10 years ago that said, oh, we'll make a piston system. Yeah, and there's some piston system conversion kits for your AR-15 that you can get. Um, usually they involve you replacing your gas block um, and your bolt carrier group. Yeah, they're just and, a plug and play. Yeah, they only work with certain handguards, different things like that, but those systems aren't really that great. For range use, they're fine. For, I mean, yeah. you know, for civilian use, low round count and stuff, they work fine. Yeah, they're good uh, for that. But the reason is, I mean, one of the big, big things is that those converted AR-15s that are converted for pistons right. tend to wear out pretty quick and start malfunctioning uh, 
after a relatively short amount of time. And the biggest thing because of that, or the biggest reason for that is bolt tilt. So I your, knew we were gonna come around to that. Your AR-15 design, the actual gun itself, the original you know, Stoner, you know, Armalite contract, whatever gun, that thing there was designed so that all your force coming back went down. Yeah, let me get That's this guy one. here. This, That's this the is, one. This is, have the correct parts, Caleb. All right, so all your forces are coming back into your gas key, down, and now your rearward forces are in line with the bore, so everything's coming straight back. On a piston design, that force is hitting the top of your, your bolt carrier. Exclusively. Exclusively, yeah. So it's hitting the top of that bolt carrier, and notice that the actual gas key itself, or the uh, strike face itself, it's not a gas key anymore, is not located in the dead center of this thing. And this is the BRN4 uh, bolt carrier group. On your piston conversion ones, usually this is located even further forward. So you have an off right. balance of the actual mass of your bolt carrier. And now you're getting, your force is actually tilting back. So your force is, your hot spot's gonna be right here. And that's gonna be with pretty much any of the converted ones. Now this particular setup I'm showing you here, this is the BRN4. This is all proprietary uh, against the AR-15. So none of this stuff will interchange with your AR-15 other than you know this upper fitting on an AR lower, it will do that. But the reason none of these internal parts will basically fit or convert is because it was all designed to be specifically a piston gun. True. So you eliminate a lot of those issues when you're running a good piston design like this one versus one of your converted ones. So your converted guns are gonna have more bolt tilt, so those are gonna wear out a lot faster than your dedicated piston upper stuff. Right. The AK solves that bolt tilt problem by having the piston joined to the actual bolt. Yeah, you have a long carrier. stroke piston on that yeah. one. It's not a short stroke like your So your it's AR. all one unit, it can't tilt. Yeah, it all comes back as one solid thing and the AK does what AKs do, so. Yeah, that's why they run so well. Yep, so with that being said, I wouldn't say that a piston AR is better than a direct impingement AR. Me personally, uh, my opinion is that a direct impingement AR-15 is better and more reliable in the long term than one of your converted guns with a piston conversion kit on it. But uh, I would say that the HK416 slash BRN4 setup is long term more reliable than any of them. However, the direct impingement system is much more cost effective for what most of us use it for. Way more, yep. Yeah, that's why all my guns are direct impingement. Yep, so not to throw too much shade on your direct impingement system or your classic design here, because this thing itself uh, does have military variants and those variants are proven. And the core system itself, uh, whenever I'm talking about you know the direct impingement, that is the same versus your military and civilian one. There are a lot of other factors that separate the two, but that is one that is proven and uh, it works. This design has been being refined over and over since the 1960s. Yeah. So, and there's no, there's no substitute for that. That's yep. empirical data that's been used over and over to make the system a little better each time, see what breaks in 10 years, 20 years down the road. We got all that data, so. Yep, we have all that data that's been refined. You have different gas port diameters, uh, gas system lengths, buffer weights, all that stuff to finely tune and balance that system to make it as reliable as possible. Yeah. And yes, it is extremely reliable. So it may not be the perfect system, but it is a perfected system. Yeah. Just and, through uh, trial and error, if nothing else. Yep. And if you got a little extra money to spend and you don't mind having a little bit more weight, go the, uh, go the BRN4 HK416 compatible route. You'll right. be glad you did. Yeah. But it's not for everyone. Well, what's the myth? Well, the, uh, the myth was that piston is better than AR and... Um, that's busted. It's not better in every scenario. It all depends no. on what you're using it for. No, so don't throw away your direct impingement guns. They're yeah, still fine. It's, uh, but if you have a direct impingement gun that was converted to a piston, throw that away and get, convert back. No, yeah. let it run. See what happens. You know, do you do you. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> if you have any experience with direct impingement, well, you probably do, but with piston guns or piston conversions, let us know in the comments what's happened to you. If you like them and they run fine, great. We'd like to hear that. 
In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time with another big edition of Smithbusters.